Ministry of Health questions CDC advice on vaccines, GPF, and U.S. Coast Guard complete joint training exercises, elderly woman charged with fraud, and Exxon warned the government against using Wales as a location for the proposed gas plant. But obviously they didn't listen. I am Mariko Bulford, and welcome to tonight's edition of Uncut News. Minister Anthony is demanding clarity from the American CDC as it relates to their recent recommendation to administer FDA-approved vaccines to persons who have already been fully immunized. The CDC recently announced that people who received a vaccine that was not fully authorized by the FDA, nor given emergency use by the WHO, may be offered a complete FDA-authorized vaccine series. Anthony responded by saying, from a medical perspective, it doesn't make much sense. If you have been immunized already with two doses of a vaccine, at this point in time, you're considered to be fully immunized. Currently, the vaccine is awaiting emergency use authorization from the WHO, but the Sputnik vaccine is still used in 74 countries around the world with no mass reports of debilitating side effects and deaths, unlike some of those shots the FDA did approve. In fact, mounting evidence is suggesting that Sputnik is among the safest and most effective of these vaccines. This week, Exxon is scheduled to begin a one-month drilling campaign that will see two new wells drilled in the Stalker block. Meanwhile, exploration drilling has already started on the Katabak 1 well and will conclude on September 30th. This well is located 104.88 nautical miles from the coast and is near to previous successful finds in the area. Over the weekend, the U.S. Coast Guard conducted a joint training exercise with the GDF. The operation included countering illicit trafficking operations and monitoring techniques. The U.S. naval ship Burlington is currently in the region conducting operations with Guyana, Trinidad, and Suriname. This is the latest of such exercises after Guyana and the U.S. reached an agreement last year for increased training of security personnel and more joint monitoring of the nation's waterways. As of Monday, the GTU has suspended its protests against the government's vaccine measures. The protests were also to highlight outstanding financial issues that GTU said needed to be addressed. They also said the break will allow the GTU to evaluate its approach and strategize for a more impactful outcome of its efforts, whatever that means. Meanwhile, the GTU also disassociated itself from the Priya is a Wild Hog song, suggesting that it was Up News song, not theirs. Are you one of the chosen few that benefits from Duty Free? Good for you! Check out these amazing vehicles that just arrived at Best Buy Auto Sales. This 2016 Toyota Harrier Grand Sport Edition, this 2014 Range Rover Evoque, and this 2016 Lexus RX 200T are all on sale. They are all fully loaded and come with all modern features. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit their showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Roche Queen Sound or Lot 2 Lama Street and tell them Mariko sent you to get in on a sweet deal. The GTU was not alone in ending their protest. Garwu and Guy Suko have come to an agreement, thus ending protests at the Albion Estate, which started on Friday. They met yesterday to address the concerns of the cane cutters who have been complaining about their low salaries as the cost of living rises by the day. The union and the company agreed that the situation with the workers at Albion was an unusual case since the recent floods affected the crop and the workers are usually paid based on the amount of cane harvested, but with so much cane destroyed, there was less to actually harvest. Guy Zuko has agreed that for this crop only, and only at Albion, the workers will be compensated for the difference between their usual productivity per punt and the actual canes cut and loaded or cut and stocked. This morning, 66-year-old elderly scammer Lauren Graham was released on $300,000 bail after being charged with attempting to defraud a real estate agent. According to the court last week, she and others conspired to fraudulently sell a parcel of land in Eccles to real estate agent Leon Joseph. Graham pleaded not guilty to the charge. She was released and will return to court October 18th. It's now time for today's Runner Report. Today, the nation recorded 130 new cases. There are now 733 persons dead, 
30 persons in the ICU, 3,505 in home isolation, and the total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stands at 29,683. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Don't miss the grand 50% off sale and get a free one-month Digicel Prime bundle plan. Available at City Mall, Starbrook Square, Regent and Light Street, Massey Turkine, and Massey Providence. Shop early, limited stocks available. Last night, an accident in Region 1 left one person dead and two others injured. 26-year-old Mark Wells died after the lorry he was traveling in toppled while descending a hill at Yarakita Oxus Road, Northwest District. Those injured were 17-year-old Leroy Chu and 35-year-old Edwin King. The driver, 27-year-old John Peter, told police that while descending the hill, the truck's defective steering arm came loose, causing him to lose control and the vehicle to top over several times. The passengers were taken to the hospital where Edwin King is listed as critical, while Leroy Chu is listed as stable. The driver is currently in police custody. Last night, 17-year-old Tamar Jarvis learned why leaving a candle unattended is a bad idea. Around 8 p.m., Jarvis lit a candle in his home and left for a nearby shop to purchase dinner. He returned home about an hour later to find his home engulfed in flames. Fire tenders arrived on the scene, but were unable to save the building. People, I'm only going to say this once. Never leave a candle or a burning heap of trash unattended. You will burn your house down. And now for our stupid news of the day, if that wasn't stupid enough. You know what I think is stupid? This government is insisting on building their white elephant of a gas project in Wales, even after Exxon warned the previous government against building such a plant on the West Bank. According to Kaito News, Exxon warned the previous government that a location on the West Bank drives up the cost of the project due to several factors, including, you know, the fact that it will be several miles inland. Just the decision alone to place it in Vredenhoop rather than on the East Coast is expected to increase the cost of the project by 72 million US dollars. Now, it would be even more expensive given the fact that this government actually wants to put it in Wales, which is, again, as I said, miles, miles inland. So the increase in cost will be mainly due to the extra miles of pipeline needed, the necessity to connect gas and power supplies to the site, and the increased technical difficulty of the project. The site on the east coast that was originally picked was sparsely populated, while Vredenhoop may be a challenging location for landing the pipeline that will eventually go to Wales, due to the fact that they are going to build a potentially dangerous high-pressure pipeline in an area of higher population density, and it's also at the mouth of one of the most active waterways, sorry, it is the most active waterway in this nation. Which is common sense when you think about it, of course it would be cheaper and make more sense to be in the more sparsely populated area than to put it in the middle of a place where you have a huge location of people living and all of this industrial and commercial activity going up and down the river. Anyway. All I'm trying to say is that ignoring an oil and gas expert's warning on where to place your oil and gas facility is pretty stupid. Hey, I'm interrupting this program to let you know that not all truck parts are created equal. Some does work hard without any problems for a long time, while others does make your truck break down quick and got your run in your pockets again. Get genuine high-quality parts from powered automotive truck spares and engine parts and extend the life of your repair. They're the authorized dealer in Guyana for Hammer USA products like brake valves, clutch discs, universal bearings, and other stuff. Visit them at 1161 EE Eccles or call them on 6970171. Powered Automotive, the number one truck and engine parts store in Guyana. If you didn't know, well, now you know. Moving on to our Uncut News Views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So you give your sponsors in the comments and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Friday's question was, what should we do with the old Demerara Harbor Bridge once the new one is built? Loram Ipsum said, move useful sections of the former bridge to smaller rivers. That'll help the most people. Maya Prasad says, leave the bridge where it is 
as it was customized for Lux River and used it for motorcycles, bicycles, and pedestrians only. Overall, it will cost more funds to survey, remove, transport, relocate, reconstruct, than to build a tailored bridge for the rivers in need of a bridge. Well, that's a sensible idea, and I'm pretty sure with less weight it means there'll be less maintenance. Mariaho Truthseeker said, It will be a dumb move to tear it down. Leave it in place so you have more access to the other side of the river. And finally, RC View Farm said, Scrap LFSB or metal by the pound. LFSB, longest floating steel bridge. Aha! Clever. It was also built by LFSB, so I appreciate your sense of humor. So for tonight's question, how do you feel about the CDC's advice regarding unapproved vaccines? Do you believe it makes sense, or are they just looking out for their friends in Big Farm? Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!